It's been just over three weeks since I last took a look at RDNA 4 on Linux, and at that time there were two major stumbling blocks. One was performance versus Windows, and the other was FSR 4 support. Now in this video I'm just concentrating on FSR 4 support, and the good news is that there is a way to get it working, but it is a manual process. Now the latest version of Cache OS released on the 31st of May. In the release notes for that, you will find a link to the forum where there's a post that details how to set up FSR4. And it is a manual process and you do have to uh, download and copy over some DLLs into various folders uh, for your uh, games installed on Steam or Heroic or wherever. Um, so in this video, we'll take a look at what FSR4 performance looks like on Linux, and we'll go through the instructions for how to install FSR4 manually. Now, there are other options, such as the OptiScaler mod. Now, I'm not going to touch that today. I may do that in another video. I'm just looking at the manual uh, instructions given on the Cache OS forum. So let's begin by looking at FSR4 performance. We'll look at image quality, stability, and the hit to performance, and so on. So I managed to get it working in four games. I tried five, and I didn't manage to get it working in Cyberpunk for some reason, but there are four games that I did get it working in, and we'll take a look at those now. First up, we have Horizon Forbidden West. And we'll begin with looking at the FSR3 image quality, and you'll see here, zoomed in, we'll see ghost trailing with all the little insects and bits floating around. There's also fine detail issues, for example, the beard here in this character. And we will take a look at performance comparing FSR 3 to 4. You'll see here we're in the 180s. Now, if we compare side by side FSR 3 and 4, we'll see there's a stark difference. Now, the, the lighting is a bit different uh, on the left, the right hand side, but you'll see there's major differences in the ghost trailing and the fine detail here. We see the beard here is very stable with FSR4. And when, but I suppose there is a downside on the right-hand side here. We see there's a about a 10% or thereabouts hit to performance. Um, but I think that's a good trade-off. The next game is Last of Us Part 2. And there's one particular area here I wanted to focus in on. And it's this little kind of drainage here, this little waterfall here. Okay, FSR3 looks, you know, reasonable. Okay, it's water. But then you look at FSR4 and you see it actually looks completely different. You see this fine detail. You can almost see the little droplets. Um, and, and when we put them side by side, you can see there's a, there's a huge difference here. On the left-hand side, it, it just looks like string almost. And on the right-hand side, you can see little droplets in, in the, the flow of water. Again, performance-wise, around that 10% hit to performance. Again, I think in this game, it's a pretty good trade-off. Oblivion Remastered. Here again, we're standing in the rain. Okay, it looks fine. You know, image quality looks decent. By the way, all of these are F uh, 4K FSR performance upscaling. But we see with FSR 4 a massive, massive difference with the rain. And when we zoom in here, we see that it's just little streaky little things you can barely see on the left. And with FSR 4, fine detail on the droplets. Again, even bigger hit to performance here, about 15%. Um, whether it's worth it, that's up to you. Um, Ghost of Tsushima, the final game. No real issues with FSR 3 and the leaves, the, the finer particles, there's no ghost trails. But this area I did want to focus in on, the foliage. And there's one particular area here where it's very, very bad uh, in terms of temporal upscaling. And there's a lot of wobbling, there's a lot of things flickering in and out of existence um, when we zoom in 10 times here. Um, this is FSR 4. There is that issue still there, but it's not as bad. But the, the finer detail, if we look at it side by side, we'll see that there's, there's quite a difference. And just how much of a difference is easier to see when we actually do this wipe effect here. Okay, so I'm wiping backwards and forwards between FSR 3 and 4. And you'll see there's a massive difference. Okay, it's, it's basically night and day. Um, very much smudgy, barely discernible leaves in FSR 3, whereas much more fine detail in FSR 4. Again, hit the performance. Again, it's around that sort of 10 to 12% area. Now, how do we set this up? Well, the latest release notes for Cache OS do have a link, and you'll see the, the link there to... Uh, you, you can look at the URL, and you'll see the link goes to the forum here. 
and there's there's you know detailed instructions first of all you do need the latest git version of the mesa driver so that's 25.2 dash devel whatever the the git commit at the time is so it's bleeding edge and you do need to get the dll file from the adrenaline installer and the, the instructions are here it basically downloads the .exe file and then you can 7 zip out the the .dll file for fsr4 um, you do need to find your way into the C Windows System 32 folder um, on Steam. It would be similar on other launchers, but with Steam, you need to find yourself into the find your way into the System 32 folder and drop in the DLL. And then, which are Steam launch options, you could see what they were there. Um, if you're thinking about, you know, I, I'd like FSR4, Cache OS tells me how to do it exactly without any real messing around. So if you do go at Cache, which is Arch-based, there's two packages really that you install. And they're meta packages, which means that they're basically wrappers for lots of other packages. And if you do the sort of uh, standard gaming one and the gaming applications, you'll get your Proton, Cache OS, you'll get your launchers and, and so on. And one thing that Cache gives you here is a is their own version of Proton. Okay, so it basically takes the latest, uh, I think the glorious egg roll version, uh, version 10 at the moment, and add some customizations to it. And in your Steam options, your properties for the game, I've got Mango HUD command in there already, and then I drop in the rest of the, the launch parameters there, the environment variables. And when you put those in, and launch it well there's one other thing you do have to do which is to set the compatibility and you can set this at a global level or per game select proton proton cache us it'll probably work with uh, proton 10-3 as well but um, if you're on cache us then it's simple enough and there's the system 32 folder and launch the game and you should be good to go now one other factor, as I'll show here with Horizon Forbidden West, is that sometimes, even though you do have FSR4 installed, it will still show up as FSR3. And, you know, you just have to go through, maybe, if you can't tell. Now, if you're using OptiScaler, you will be able to tell. But with the manual approach there, if it's not telling you it detected FSR4, then you may have to go through some of the kind of comparisons that I just showed you there, you know, checking things like the, you know, finer particles, ghost trailing, um, you know, and, and one telltale uh, hint will be the drop in performance. So maybe have a look at performance in a, a scene before you do the FSR4 upgrade, note what the FPS is, and then without changing any settings, install FSR4 DLL manually, run the game, check the performance, and see if there's a drop. If there's no drop, it probably has not worked because there's definitely going to be a drop in performance. It's up to you whether you think that the drop in performance is warranted. Um, but for things like the ghost trailing, you know, uh, going from FSR performance upscaling to FSR quality is not going to get rid of ghost trails, for example. So... Um, if you do want that superior image quality, stability and so on, then go for FSR4, accept the performance penalty and dial in your settings then to get your whatever F 60 FPS plus. So, so that's an update on where FSR4 is. I think that's a major, major hurdle overcome. Um, I think that's very significant. And I will do another follow up video on performance. I, I haven't done a comparison with Windows yet. I just haven't had the time. But I do believe from what I saw and looking back on some old statistics that I recorded, I do believe I see some bit of a, a performance improvement. So I'm quite optimistic on that front. But I will do a, a Linux versus Windows comparison for RDNA 4. And that will be, uh, I, I'm sure, important for people who have 9070, 9070 XT and now the 9060 and 90, uh, or the 9060 XT. There is only the one model with two different uh, VRAM capacities. Uh, I obviously advise only getting the, the 16 gigabyte one. But that'll do it for this video. If you want to keep up to date with RDNA 4 or any other Linux content, uh, gaming content, or 
Windows versus Linux, then this is the place to find it. Subscribe, like, comment below, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. And in the meantime, happy gaming.